My name is Alan Carter. I'm the president and CEO of Cabral Gold. We have an advanced gold exploration project in northern Brazil called Cuyu Cuyu. We have two gold deposits uh, so far uh, that are based on a, a resource estimate that was last updated in 2018. Since then, we've done over 30,000 meters of drilling. We've currently got a number of rigs uh, turning on site, and we have a steady stream of, uh, of news and getting some very good results. Great. Alan, look, thanks for coming on the show. It's, 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 a, it's a quickie, really. I've got two questions for you. Um, one, over the recent race, uh, you've announced um, a $5 million uh, Canadian dollar raise um, right now. Now, that's fine, except for two things. One, market conditions are a bit poor, so obviously it's a little bit dilutory for shareholders. And secondly, yep. they're coming out immediately before the Met results come out. People are worried about what you know and what you don't know about that. So what's the story? Well, Matt, uh, look, uh, I, I have no idea what the Met results are going to be. They're, they're slightly delayed. We're hoping to have them out in May, uh, and uh, we should have those out in June. Fully expect to get those those results out in June, and I have no idea what they're going to come back uh, like. But the fact of the matter is we're an exploration company. We've got a number of rigs turning, and and we need to raise money. So we weren't able to wait. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, market conditions have been, as you say, a bit poor. But, um, you know, we have people on site and rigs turning and equipment and all the rest of it. So we need, needed to raise money now. So it's a question of you like what you see, not a question of you don't like what you see and the Met results coming through. Because obviously, if, if Met results, well, when are they due, actually? They were due in May, so what's happening? They were due at the end of the May. It looks like now it's going to be mid to late June. Um, there's a little bit more time spent once the column leach tests have been completed in terms of what basically has to happen, Matt, is the material that's still in the columns has to be scrubbed and then assayed, obviously. And, and we, we don't know exactly how much gold will be, uh, will have been recovered until we've assayed the residual material and then, and then done a, a, a calculation. So, um, so yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer, but not, 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 you know, months and months and months. So, uh, so that's, that's the process. Okay. Okay. So, you I mean, what, what, so explain what, why they, why do they get it so? Why are they why are they sort of like a month out in terms of timing? Was there anything that did you start late, or is there something gone wrong in the middle? Yeah, it's a combination of things that have just added up. I mean, like I said, it's not a massive delay, but uh, the, the samples were a little bit late arriving in the lab. Uh, we had the Christmas break, and uh, in terms of shipping, at least, so, so that meant the test started a little bit late. And uh, and they need a little bit more time than we anticipated in terms of uh, you, you know doing the uh, conciliate reconciliation in terms of the assaying the, the material. So uh, and I'll get a little bit of update from the lab uh, this afternoon. So um, look, I mean the bottle roll uh, results, which is the first part of that network, was were excellent. So um, you know I know nothing about the leach uh, the column leach test, but. Um, you know, we're very optimistic. Okay, so you're updating in terms of timing, not updating in terms of what you can see, or what they're starting to see, right? Just want to be clear. Correct. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, so because the other thing is here with this is obviously if the Met results come th through in mid to late June and they're not good, people will, will, will kind of put two and two together and make five, which is you knew now and you misled the <laughs> I market. certainly did not know. Right. I certainly do not know. I mean, I'm, I have fiduciary obligations, right? So, there's, the, the, you know, I, I, I certainly do not know. Uh, so, um, no, no, there's, there's, you know, people can speculate all they like and people love to speculate, uh, but, um, but that's not the case. Okay, fine. The other thing is, um, you've lent the company some money. You've done this before. Yes. What, why did you need to do that? Well, um, you know, the market, obviously we've been working on this financing for quite some time. Um, at, since starting the process of the financing and prior to the announcement, the market took a, a little bit of a turn for the worse. So, you know, we decided to delay it slightly. Um, and that's meant that the companies needed a bit of a bridge. And so, you know, I've stepped up and, uh, and, and uh, loaned the company. Um, well, it remains to be seen how much money the company will, 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 uh, will require in terms of how much they'll draw down from the loan. Uh, but, um, you know, we want to keep all the rigs turning, Matt. We've been getting some really spectacular results. So we want to keep that momentum and keep that effort going during this uh, financing process. You know, unfortunately, it's a tough time. I mean, the, 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 the um, you know, very, very difficult time. I, you know, I don't relish the fact that we have to raise money during this period. But, but look, um, as we've said before, we have all this oxide material. So if, if you look at that press release carefully that we took out announcing the financing, we've given some guidance to the market about what to expect over the next few months. We're going to update the global resource estimate. 
um, at Kuyu Kuyu towards the end of the year here in the fourth quarter. And that's important because the last estimate, the current estimate, is based on um, about 27,000 metres of drilling up to June 2018. Since then, we've done about 35,000 metres of additional drilling and we haven't updated the resource estimate. So we're really looking forward to that. There's a lot of effort going into that. As you know, we've made a number of new, uh, new hard rock and oxide discoveries. The oxide is this soft material we've got on the top. The other thing that we're doing with the oxides is we're doing scoping work on the oxide material. So this is the stuff we've just been talking about. This is the material that's sitting on surface that's free digging material, doesn't require any drilling and blasting, and is currently the subject of these metallurgical tests that we've just discussed. Now, if that met work on that oxide material comes back from uh, in June that's positive, um, you know, we will then uh, move fairly aggressively through a scoping a study and hopefully a PA towards the end of the year um, to, in order to demonstrate the economic potential of that material. Um, so, so the network is, is very key, but we're already starting to scope out what the potential size and cost on that operation could be, but it's very early days. It is, it is early days. The other thing that I noticed that you did um, is you've gone from five rigs down to three. You, you're kind of suspending yeah. the recon work, the, you know, yeah. expansion, the, the ex, ex, explore, exploratory component to this. That makes sense given the market conditions and given you don't want to burn yeah. through this cash too exactly. quickly. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you can't be blind to what's happening in the broader market. I mean, uh, obviously, it's disappointing that we've had to temporarily uh, suspend that regional work. There's tremendous upside from the regional work. We do have a, a bunch of results pending on, on one of the uh, uh, regional targets called Indio, which is only about 1.5 kilometers to the uh, southeast of MG. So it'll be very interesting to see what, what that comes back with. Yeah, but we've temporarily suspended it until the market... Uh, it improves. Uh, like I said, you can't be kind of completely blinkered to what's happening in the larger larger market. Right. And so uh, particularly when... Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. I mean, it's tough for everyone. I, 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 we get it. But I'm just saying, I'm just, it, it's how companies react and behave accordingly. So that's why, you know, going out and raising money because you want to be able to continue the bulk of the work is one thing. Um, hitting big targets is still important for you, though. You know, the, is it going to affect the timing of um, the start of the PEA? Because, you know, you're you're waiting for this kind of technical report at the end of this, well, Q, Q4 at some point, right? Um, is the PEA going to be delayed? Or are other things going to be delayed? Are these big momentous targets not going to be hit? Actually, I think it's quite the reverse. Because we're putting a lot of focus on... Um, the key objectives here, which are update the, the global resource at Kuyu Kuyu and to demonstrate the economic viability of these blankets. I think actually the timing of the PA is likely to be moved up. Now, the press release last week, uh, you know, gave some guidance that will commence the PA uh, towards the, uh, in, in the fourth quarter. Um, I hope that we'll, we'll actually start it quite a bit before that. We're already doing quite a lot of scoping work right now. Um, so I'm hoping that we can move that schedule up. So rather than starting in the fourth quarter, um, you know, if we're lucky, we will actually get um, get that finalised in the fourth quarter. So, um, so yeah, um, that, you know, it, we have sort of rationalised things, and, and what what we are doing is we're being more focused. I mean, it is Kuyu Kuyu is a district. There's undoubtedly a whole series of gold deposits there, additional gold deposits. We've got some very good drill holes, as you know, in a bunch of peripheral targets here, but we're focused on on the new discoveries that we've got, building that resource base, and also at the same time, in parallel with that, demonstrating the economic viability of those blankets. Right. That's the key, Matt. Now, if we can get a PA on these blankets re relatively quick, quickly and demonstrate that they're uh, economically viable, uh, and I'm optimistic that we will, obviously that, what's the significance of that? Well, the significance of that is that we then may be in a position to jump off what I call the hamster wheel. The hamster wheel being, you know, you finance, you, you issue equity, you dilute, you finance, you issue equity and dilute. Obviously, if we're able to produce gold from those blankets uh, relatively quickly and get up and running relatively quickly here, um, we won't need to keep coming back to the market and diluting the capital structure of the stock because we'll be, be in production. Right. Okay. Okay. And just one, and just a, a couple of little um, details, nuances. Is obviously with the updated resource. So central is not going to be included in there. It will be, but we haven't. It look the central resource will be updated, but it will be largely based on the 2018 wireframes. Right. Okay. Right. So, so the the, the 2018 resource was based on a fourteen hundred dollar gold price. So central will, uh, like all the, all, the, all, all of the deposits that will come into the next resource estimate at the end of the year, will be based on probably $1,800 gold. The costs will all be updated. 
Um, some of, we haven't finished the drilling at Central, so the drilling won't be complete. Uh, we won't have sufficient drill holes probably uh, by the end of this year to actually window out this high grade zone that's emerging at Central. Um, so you know there probably will be a, an update once we finish the drilling at Central. We won't finish the drilling probably until early next year. So, but it will be updated, but it will be based on the 2018 wireframes. Okay, okay. And and, and just I want to say, again, re been really really clear here because let's say how you adapt to market conditions and especially uh, if they are extended market conditions because no one's really that clear about what's going to happen. You know, you've got some economists going. Terminal, others going, don't worry, um, you know, every, every fall, there's a kind of reset moment in here. So, and goodness knows what, what to believe. If this does go on slightly longer, do you adapt your strategy further? Is there a point where you say, hey, we probably do need to hunker down for a bit because everyone's going to need to hunker down for a bit. Or otherwise, yeah. too, money's too expensive. Would you loan the company more money? Or do you say, I tell you what, we're going to double down on this oxide blanket component to the story, knowing that we've kind of got these sort of higher grade numbers behind us and, and they'll come through at some point in the future. I mean, how are you thinking about it? It's fairly, you need to be agile. It's fairly um, fluid at the moment. You do need to be agile. And look, I've been here before. I've, I've seen much worse market conditions than this several times in my career. So um, look, uh, yeah, I mean, we may make additional changes if there is a protracted downturn. Uh, if there is a protract protracted downturn, I think, uh, you know, we'd probably, you know, consider dropping one or two additional rigs and really, rather than, uh, uh, you know, continuing a drill, we will just be updating, just just be focused on demonstrating the economic bill, economic uh, viability of those oxide blankets. So, yeah, I mean, I did look, look, all options are on the table. Um, but as you know, uh, to, to your other point, look, I, look, I'm a very large shareholder in this, Matt. Um, it's quite unusual, as you know, for the CEO, it's not unique by any means, but it's quite unusual in my experience for a CEO to have actually invested quite the amount of money that I have. And I've invested it because I really, truly believe we're onto something special here. I've looked at hundreds of gold projects in my career. And so, look, I, I'm very committed to making this a success. We've got a very special project. We've been getting some spectacular results. And this oxide material that we've discovered with three of these oxide deposits in just the last 12 months, we believe is a, a real game changer because it does give us that pathway to production in fairly short order. This material, because it's soft, um, obviously doesn't need drilling and blasting to mine it. So the mining costs are going to be extremely cheap. And, and, and also, it's not going to require a massive mill with, you know, various sort of crushers and, and, and grinding circuits. So, um, you know, all that feeds into the likely costs and the potential profit margin here. So, look, we don't have that PEA done yet, but we are going to focus on that. Okay. Okay. I guess that's next few months. That, okay, that, 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 that's good, that's good news in, in, in terms of outcomes. Um, just one, again, it's a, little, a small sort of nuanced component here, which is in, according to like the, the terms of your loan, you want 250,000 of that to be paid back within like, a 90 day period. Yeah. Is that because you're nervous right. about outcomes or you think, well, that's what I did last time. I'll do the same again. Um, look, I mean, uh, this is all my savings. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. So it's not like I'm a, I'm Bill Gates and I can just oh here's another million dollars. I don't. You know, this is all my my life savings. So you know, I would like to see some of it back in a reasonable time frame. Uh, but obviously, I'm the CEO of the company, so um, I'm aligned with all the other shareholders here. Um, but I, you know, I, I would like the company to pay me pay me that loan back at some point. You know, so so that's why we put some time frame on it. But look, look, I'm flexible. I'm obviously a friendly lender. I mean, we haven't gone at, gone out to, you know, uh, a group or a lender that is uh, a bunch of sharks to put no finer point on it. So look, I, yeah, I'm flexible. Okay, I, I think that's really encouraging. That's really encouraging. Okay, one, you put you put a meaningful, significant amount of your um, liquid assets into this thing as well as obviously having shares um and you're flexible on that depending on market conditions and wh whatever the company is able to achieve now i appreciate that um look alan i just wanted to just um sort of clear that up in, in my mind and for um, other people looking in here we've had lots of questions sent in about, about the timing that makes sense to me appreciate it uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And look, if any of you viewers have got any additional questions, uh, you know, please ask them to uh, to drop me a line. They can get me at alan at cabralgold.com and I, I'll respond to all those emails.